right, with a walking cane or self-defense cane, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a standard walking cane. This one's a little bit bigger. I'm going to show you the difference between a couple of training canes that you can use or just use the one that you have. But you're going to start with a simple warm-up. Palm faces the sky. Long side comes out of your thumb, and you're going to crank it forward. Just going forward, around and around, nice and easy, slow as smooth, smooth as fast. That means take your time if you have to. My hand is not squeezing closed. If it squeezes, it's not gonna move. It's closed and relaxed at the same time. Learn how to do two things at once, closed and relaxed. You're going around first, and then you're gonna bring it over and back, side to side, and see how tight I want you to keep this right here? I want it here and not like this. This is how you might start, that's all right, but work it in, get it tighter. Learn how to fight from behind your walking stick or fight from behind your fighting cane, your combat cane. This is a Cane Masters Dojo Training Cane. If you want to see what one of these things costs, it's very inexpensive. It's a good investment. The link is below. It's that first link. But I just want you to get the blood moving into the joints. Keep everything safe from injury. It goes in the other hand. Same thing, starting with a forward cranking or turning forward rotation. The purpose here... Good evening, Sensei Emmett, is just to get, it's morning here, it isn't afternoon yet. It's nice and sunny, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I, I knew you knew that. Anyway, nice and warm. But we're going around and around and around and around. And then we're gonna bring back and forth, side to side, in front of the body. And again, this is an important point. You'll likely start here. Most of us do, I started like this. But then you wanna get it tight, right in front of your body. Learn how to fight from behind your weapon. The first rule of self-defense, the first principle is always paying attention, but then immediately after that is gonna be get in a better position. Make yourself a smaller target. Step back or step forward. And then put that weapon, that stick doesn't bleed if there's a knife. That stick is longer than the knife. You have the reach advantage. Put that stick between you and the threat. But we're warming up here. We're going side to side. You're building callus in your hands. You're going to build a good feel for it. It's going to be able to slide through your hands better. And you're going to be getting the heart rate up. And you can do this standing and you can do this in a chair. Either way is correct. I want you to go right into some exercises to start to build strength for that power. Good. 12 degrees. Harold, that's freezing. It's 12 degrees in uh, Pennsylvania, Harold said. Yeah, I moved down here from Ohio just almost two years ago, and I think it's 12 up there too. And uh, they had snow all week. All we have is the sun and the beach. I'm not trying to rub it in, I'm just saying. Why did I wait so long? Almost 50 years, I waited almost 50 years to move to paradise. But sometimes you gotta do, pay your dues, right? If you weren't born there, you gotta learn how to move there. But remember, you're not a tree. You don't have to stay where you were planted. Now, what I did was, I'm going to do that again, because I want you to do this. I want you to add this in to your training to build strength in the chest, in the arms, for the guard. Not for looks, not to make you look great on the beach, which is just over here. I know you're not walking around with your shirt off, Harold, over there in uh, 12 degrees, but it's all about power. It's about striking power. It's about your guard. It's about your ability to pull yourself up or push yourself up, or if someone's on you, push them off, or if you need to snatch them in and pull them in. Or maybe it's you're walking with your grandkids and the threat's coming here and your grandson's there, your granddaughter. You gotta pick her up and move her here so you can turn and face the threat. I want you to have the strength for that. So you're gonna use this band. This is just a, a thinner band. They have the meat even more thin than this. That's the lightest one. This is probably the second strongest. And it's just a silicone or an elastic band. It's gonna go around your back. Simple loop. You have one loop on one side, the other loop on the other side, and then you're going to go for time under tension. That means I want you to have resistance for a certain number of time or amount of time and not a certain number of repetitions. So we're not going reps, we're going time. And the time here is 30 seconds to start to elicit muscle growth, dense muscle fiber. You want both uh, uh, the slow twitch and the quick twitch. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to get both or how to activate both. However much you have of each one is a lot dependent on genetics. I think, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, it's just what I've read and what I've been told. But we're just going out and in. I'm doing really well, how are you doing? 
Kyle says hello. So we're going out and in for 30 seconds and it's a consistent pace. I'm not gonna rest here and I'm not gonna rest here. As soon as you're out, you're back. As soon as you're about, you're at, or back, you're out. Just out and in, 30 seconds, it'll burn even with this lighter band. And the goal again is to activate that muscle, get blood into the muscle, start to build power and endurance. A lot of people have good strength, but they have no endurance. When we talk self-defense, I want you to have, <laughs> yeah, where since AM it is, that is pretty warm. Uh, I want you to have the endurance. If you can't last in the fight, it doesn't matter how strong you are. Maybe you get a couple of good strikes in, it's going well for you, you've turned the tide, but then you run out of steam, you run out of energy. So we wanna build in this workout today, using your walking cane for self-defense or a self-defense cane, I want you to start to build strength and endurance at the same time. All the exercises we're gonna do today will do that. Now I have another spin for you, and this is different than where you started. This is gonna be a figure eight spin, or the sideways figure eight, also known as the infinity sign. So we call this an endless, as an infinity spin. And I know I probably don't have to break that down, but I always do for some reason. And notice that my hand is closed. I want you to build flexibility into all of your strikes. Good morning, Nod. It's good to see you today. Everybody was reporting how cold it is where they are. I said it's uh, hot and sunny outside here in South Florida. We had a cold weekend. It got down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I know that doesn't seem cold to me either. People were walking around in parkas and I tell them, you have no idea. Don't go north. It's pretty cold. Naj, I think you're in India, right? Where, how is it in India today? So we're going around. Once you get the hang of it, start to speed up. I want you to build flexibility. I want you to have mobility, flexibility, strength, and endurance from these workouts. These workouts, cane self-defense workouts, for every single age, doesn't matter your age, you want to have strength, speed, or speed is not as important. Speed comes, right? Speed is more about timing and distance. More about that later. But strength, flexibility, mobility, your ability to move, ambulate, walk, I'm at mobility, and then you have to have, oh, you're in Miami. <laughs> Sorry, Nash. I thought, I don't know why I thought you were in India. I thought maybe one day I, I must have read someone else's that came right under your name or something. Anyway, 82 in Miami. It's 80 degrees here in Lake Park. All right, so we're coming up. And we're coming up on the other side. I was watching the local news, news yesterday, uh, Naj, you may have seen it about all of the uh, attacks in South Beach. And I thought, I gotta, I gotta get in the car and drive down to South Beach and give some free lessons down there. One of my favorite gyms in the entire country is called Sweat 440. It's one of the most brilliant concepts I've ever seen, Sweat 440, and they have them all over Miami now. I don't know if you've ever been, Naj, if you've ever been to South Beach, I'm sure you've been to South Beach, but you've been to that gym. It's a tiny little, smaller than my space here, but it's packed, well, it was pre-COVID. Boy, I hope they're still out there. All right, so I went forward and I went backward. And the whole goal is, again, it's flexibility, endurance, strength, but the strength that you're gonna get in those forearms, in the hands from this type of movement is going to help you when you need to, smack my nose, defend yourself, right? Come in with a jabbing motion, come in with a raking motion, come in with, whew, <laughs> funny. I've been cold. I know what you mean by cold. I've been in some, uh, I've climbed some mountains. I've been, I've been in some cold places. Uh, wind chill, 47 uh, below zero, sustained. Uh, sustained winds of 75 miles an hour, wind gusts 147. That, play, that gets cold. When you throw in the wind chill, man, you really bring the temperature down. All right, I wanted to tell you, because I know you asked me this last time, what's the difference between the two training, dojo training canes? This is the lightweight rattan. This is a great option. If you are getting started, you haven't done it in a while, you don't feel as strong as you used to, or you don't feel like you have the strength to handle a heavy oak cane, go with this one. This is a grass, rattan is a grass. 
and you're gonna give up some of the striking power with this, but you'll pick up speed, and speed, speed turns into strength and strikes anyway. Speed becomes a, a harder strike, not, all, not always. You also have to have the follow through and a little bit of weight behind it, but you're gonna build into that. This one is gonna move so much faster. You can hear whipping, the whipping sound, that's because of the material it's made out of. It is not as strong as this. So when you go for self-defense, you will be able to create distance, right? You will be able to use that hook and rake. But look at the difference between the hook. Yeah, that's sad because South Beach could be, a, uh, is, there are some great places there, great boxing gyms, great restaurants in South Beach. But just recently, since the COVID and the explosion and the um, you know, anti-police sentiment and all that other stuff, uh, crime is going through the roof, violent crime. But um, it's not as bad as Chinatown in uh, Oakland where they want to defund the police and they're going after the elderly. They go after the weakest, the thugs. They, meaning the thugs, the criminals, the ones who have the revolving door there because the, they won't keep them in, in jail. They just let them out. They, um, violent criminals are going after people. They hit a guy 91 years old yesterday, smashed in the back of the head, knocked him to the ground. Same guy went after people in their late 50s, early 60s. All right, anyway, this, so this is, the, this is oak. With the oak, you're gonna get a lot stronger strikes, right? You're gonna get bone-breaking ability that you're not gonna have with this. Yes, the heavy cane is gonna be the best choice. Here's my personal suggestion and what I personally do. I started with this, and then I wanted a heavier cane almost immediately, and I got, got this, and I find that I go back and forth, back and forth. When I'm doing a lot of exercise, I do some here and I do some in there. Absolutely, they never go after the guys who can, the men and the women who are trained. Right, good point, Sensei Amit. So if you have both, and they're both, this is I think 30 some bucks, this is 40 bucks, like right at the bottom threshold. Um, if you have one of each, you can train, and then if you want to train keeping one cane on the ground for mobility's sake, in other words, you have to have it to ambulate, to walk around. If you have two canes, use one for your balance and the other, the other to strike. That was not intentional. Um, but also if you want an extra training tool, something as simple as this can replace almost the entire gym. And there, I mean, there are a million ways that you can do it with the cane, without the cane. And we started, and I'm, I'm ready to do another set where we just put, put it around the back and one goes on both sides of the front. And then we did this and I said, time under tension. But I also said, I want you to get explosiveness too. So this time under tension is gonna give you that endurance and that strength in the muscle. But then I want you to explode slow too. So you're just gonna explode on the way out, slow on the way back, resist on the way back, and do this for 30 seconds. And you're gonna feel it really burns your muscle, burns it out, makes it grow makes it stronger, makes your strikes more explosive. Someone tries to take the cane from you, your grip is gonna be wicked strong. You're also gonna learn how to twist and drive. When they try to take it, you twist and you drive. But you're gonna do this second set in this workout of explosive pushing, slow resistance on the way back, but don't stop here, don't take the resistance off. As soon as you get to the point where it's starting to go to almost no resistance, explode again. Two, three, one, two, three, one. And you're, you're gonna feel, you're gonna see or feel your heart rate is going up. You're gonna lean out faster, you're gonna build the muscle, you're gonna build the strength, you're gonna build the capacity to defend yourself. And then we're gonna go back to the cane. Now, I wanna get into the strikes for self-defense. And I wanna give you a combo to practice today. I gotta move the camera back, my apologies. But I did that without warning. But I want you to do, a simple striking combination. Yeah. Upgraded the whole gym. Good point, Sensei Emmett. Sensei Emmett said when he opened his gym, he uh, went with the bands, started with body weight, went to that, everything upgraded. It's amazing how much resistance you can get with the band. It's more consistent resistance. I still like weights. I still like to push iron every once in a while. I love swinging kettlebells. I love a good sledgehammer, right? 
Sledgehammer for grip is amazing. But uh, the bands, the bands give you so many, so many options. So the crook is facing out. So this is a combination. You know this is one of my favorite ones. And I, and I credit this a thousand percent. I didn't even know about this strike until I went and I visited the maker of these canes now. The owner of the company is called, uh, it's called Cane Masters. And that's the first link below if you wanna see the Cane Masters canes. I think it's the best cane. I prefer this. I've now used aluminum and the polymer ones, the hard plastic. I, I like this for the way it feels, for the way it looks. It's not a, obtrusive and it's not too heavy, but it's hard enough to do everything you need it to for self-defense. And um, Keith Melton, that, Keith, he's a spy. You have to Google Keith Melton. And uh, what was a tall, skinny guy with the red hair, the comedian late night, had his TV show, Conan O'Brien. So if you wanna see Keith Melton, he goes on to Conan O'Brien and he's, a, he's a, into the spy. Yeah, I love an ax, chopping trees, excellent. Um, and then you can use the band to, to simulate the chopping on the inside. But Keith Melton showed me, Master Keith Melton, student of, um, I think Joe Robana down in Miami, down by Naj, and then um, the, the man himself, uh, Gary Shuey, not Gary Shuey, I was gonna say Gary Hernandez, but uh, Master Shuey. I think Gary Hernandez and I just missed each other this weekend. He came in to see Keith Melton. But I went to his house, this guy has this amazing house, he used to have all this spy stuff in there and then he gave it all to the spy museum or loaned it to him or whatever. He helped start the spy museum in Washington, DC. The guy's like a bona fide spy fanatic, writes books and all that. But he's into the cane. He's like a cane, he's a cane master. So cane master's cane, owned by cane master himself, uh, Keith, his name keeps popping on my head. Uh, Keith Melton showed me this technique and he, and he, had, me hold, he had me hold one and he took another one and he go, bam, and it, it did. It caught me by surprise. I didn't realize it was coming so fast and almost knocked it out of my hand. If it weren't another Cane Masters cane, it would have broken, but it comes up so fast. And, and he said, you know, imagine sticking that between the legs or up under the chin for self-defense. It's very effective. And I've been training with it and getting faster with it ever since. And the key is in the two pivot points. The wrist is turning up while the elbow is bringing up the forearm. So you have this massive lever, this big bar of oak, and it's coming right up between their legs, and it's unexpected. You're not in this protective position. This is a better position when you can. Hey, back up. You know, I will defend myself, and then you're striking. But caught off guard, you're standing there. They come up real close. They're getting too close. You're saying, hey, get back. Bam, you just bring that up really fast. So that's what we're gonna start this combination with. The first one's gonna come up between the legs, and then I want you to pull this back. Think about like starting a lawnmower, right? Starting a snowblower up there in Philadelphia or in Pennsylvania. So you're gonna come here, pull, and when you pull back, you're using your shoulder to pull. That brings the other hand into that natural position. So from here, it comes naturally in, and I want you to step with that foot and thrust. And your goal is to stick this wood, yeah, his has that little uh, window breaker in it, right? The glass breaker, smashing the gray man cane. He calls it his or savage cane, a gray man cane. Smashes the nose, smashes the teeth, goes into the eyes, goes through the throat. From here, up between the legs, pull, step. Or are you talking about his cane master's cane? Yeah, Gary's got a cool cane master's version too. This is my signature I don't have a signature cane. This is just the one I, I'm gonna make you a page. It's the first link below. I said, put this on there because I want the starting option. And, if, and, it, and, it, and he's like, well, tell everybody they should get them all. And I said, yeah, of course they should. <laughs> you should see this guy's house. That's not how he got it. He, he owned a bunch of McDonald's for a long time and sold them. Brilliant businessman. Earned every penny, I'm sure. But um, he didn't make them all selling canes. But a, a business think he's you know, smart. Tell him you should have both. Tell him you should have a whole, uh, you, should, you know, like his house, he's got this, um, his office is amazing. He's got all these canes just everywhere. And I'm just salivating. I'm thinking, man, I love to have all these canes. If you own the company, you can have as many canes as you want, as long as you're selling them. So you're coming here, in step, thrust. Then I want you to let go of the back hand and I want you to strike. From here, bam, just to the side of the head. Now, as it comes in, Allow your crook, allow your hook to rake through their face. 
I don't know, maybe take an ear, take an eye, take a nose for self-defense, take some teeth out for self-defense. So your combo that I want you to practice up between the legs and, and, and th this is why I'm having you do this. I want to see you turn and thrust and then release. So you've created all this energy. It hits them really hard. And as they're going back, you just bring this straight through at that angle and down. So from here, it's just three, uh, three steps. One, two, three. And then switch to the other hand in between the leg, pull, step, and thrust. In between the leg, pull, thrust, slash. We'll call that a slash. That, again, you're trying to get that to just rake through their flesh, skin, anything you can for self-defense. The first motion is between the legs, or if you have to, on the chin, wherever you can hit them. This is the threat. It's just right up, right? Imagine it lifts them, lifts them off the ground, boom, and then thrust, and then boom. And I don't want to go full speed with that one because I ruined a bag recently. This one just ripped right through it. It was an older bag that someone had given me, and it was hanging. It was an old Everlast bag. They're not the best, but from here, it was worn a little bit. But my point is, that's, you know, that against skin, bone, flesh for self-defense is going to be extremely effective for you. So I want you to practice the, this combo, though, because practicing the combinations means they can come out without thinking about it. And you might not ever use them. God forbid, you know, knock on wood, let's hope you don't ever need it. But if you do, you don't want to be thinking about what should I do next? You think about targets, and, that, and sometimes you don't. When it's pure reaction, right? Um, it's better to respond than react. But if you have no other choice, he's about to make contact with your body, with his fist, with his hand, with two hands, with a skateboard, with a knife. You want to just light him up, lift him off the ground, or at least drop him down a little bit, thrust in, and finish him off. And these are all just using what you have naturally. It's not fancy techniques. Someone said to me the other day, um, they saw my, my Wing Chun Punch uh, video and they said it looks like you didn't take a uh, or maybe you, you didn't have formal Wing Chun training and the truth is I have not had any formal Wing Chun training but that doesn't mean I can't figure out the basics of the punch do I do it as well as it man nope will I maybe if I spent years and years and years like he did mastering it or Bruce Lee or something but once you get the basics down then you practice the basics that's what this is this is the basics Starting from here, get the basics first. Big uh, strike through the groin, supported, thrust through the throat or the eyes or the nose, or the solar plexus, but just a simple thrust. And then let that back hand off as you just turn that hand and see this motion. You're just coming down like the angle of a roof. Whew. Let the snow fall, right? So from here, one more time between the legs into the face, and then thrusting through. Now, I want to show you one more with your band, because I know some of you guys have these bands, and you work with them a lot, and you're getting stronger. And this one is all for the triceps. Now, the triceps and striking. And I want to show you the striking combination before we do that, because I, I wanted to um, and stay there. I need to get this real quick. I told you I was going to get this one. I got a few of these in because we keep talking about the Kubaton and, or, you know, it's just basically a palm stick or a small Yawara. Um, it's just, a, it's a small stick. This one's made out of aluminum and the, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a debate that's been around forever. Are these effective? And I saw hard to hurt. Have you seen this channel? It's called hard to hurt and it's Mike. I call him angry Mike. I don't think that's what he calls himself. <laughs> Sorry, Mike, I, I, I can never think on my feet fast enough. Um, yeah, absolutely, good point, Naj. But uh, hard to hurt, his name is Mike, he's an ex-cop. Guy's really smart, he's got great ideas, and uh, he's always talking about his flashlight, which is great. I've got flashlights to show you too, because you keep asking me, you know, what other, t what other devices can you carry? Can't get to your cane fast enough, you know, uh, you're in your car, you're on a date, you're at the restaurant or whatever, what else can you carry? And a lot of his, he, he just did a breakdown video on one of these and I laughed the whole time and he had 
Excellent points. Um, I can't think of what he calls himself, something Mike, Mike something. But hard to, I call him, I'll call him hard to hurt Mike. So hard to hurt Mike is saying that, you know, he shows the one with the, the two things coming out of your hands. Have you seen those that get the spikes? And he's like, you know, that causes all this pressure. It's too much. It's not smart. It gets icy Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Since Hammond. I knew you would know. I, have you got him on your show yet? So I see Mike, he's showing you, you know, bad idea with the two spikes. Totally agree. I mean, I don't, I've never experienced it, but he makes it. I don't, I, I don't have to put them and then hurt myself. To, <laughs> I can learn from what he showed us. That's good enough for me. Um, and then he said, yeah, I, I would imagine. That's why I call him Angry Mike. And, that, and there's no offense, I see Mike. It's no, I don't want to backyard brawl you. I, although I would never say no to something like that. That's, that always sounds like fun to me. Um, but he's, he's done all these really cool where he does those, uh, those backyard brawls or something. I forget what they call them. And, um, you know, people who mouth off, all, the, all of the Twitter trolls come after him. And then he, he fights some of them, I guess. But uh, I love those videos, by the way. And, and, and I think he bests most of them or all of them. Anyway, um, and, and, he, and he talks about in his video where Icy Mike says, you know, a lot of people um, who carry these, and he gave the reference that I give all the time. It's like when I used to shoot at the flat range back in Ohio, you'd go in and you'd see these guys who are well in their 70s or 80s and their belly's out to here and they're wearing 5'11 pants and they've got, you know, they've got all the, they've got an arsenal, all of the top uh, assault weapons, you know, and, and all of the accoutrements and, um, you know, but they couldn't walk 10 steps without falling over dead from a heart attack because they don't, do any exercise more than driving to shoot their weapons. And in their mind, you know, all they need is that one strike or whatever that that's going to save them. And, uh, he, you know, he equated that mentality to these, you know, this is all you need. You don't need to do anything else with it. You just have to have one of these and you're, and I agree with that. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I'm not saying he's wrong. Who am I? To, I don't know. Right. There are no studies on it. Uh, they're just, we, we both just know what we see, right? He knows his experience as a law enforcement. I know my experience. And when I was in law enforcement, I think I'm older than he is. I'm sure I'm older than he is. You know, we, we were taught to use this with come along techniques. And, um, and he, and I think in his video, he's like, that would never work. They do. I've used it, it, pulling somebody out of a bar more than once here on the arm. So these do work. They do work for those pressure points. But you know, if the guy turns and it's uh, Hoist Gracie himself, is he going to take it away from you and choke you out? Probably, right? Or if, if it, he turns and it's Mike Tyson, he's going to bite your ear off? Probably. That's not what I'm talking about, right? Good morning. It's good to see you, Phil. Um, but I wanted to show you one thing you can do with this real quick. Without the cane, this is to supplement the cane. This is all self-defense. You know, um, how to use your walking cane for self-defense or your self-defense cane. When the cane's not there... And you, and you, or you've lost or it's broken or what, you have to go hand to hand. I want to show you a simple way to practice. And you can do this on a bag or you can just simply do it in the air. We call this the flinch block. You're going to get behind, behind the block, behind the guard. And see this? I create this between me and you. Right? Yeah, exactly. And this is, this is to Sensei Emmett's point. If you can't defend yourself with an empty hand, you're not going to be able to use the kubaton. So I'm going to show you how to do the empty hand. We're going to put the kubaton in it. And we're going to keep it super simple. So from here... I want you to have to look around my hands, just like I do with a weapon, to be able to, you're not gonna punch me in the hand, right? So my hands are always here, never here. You're not, you're not fast enough, no one is. It's not you, it's not me. It's just the brain can't get the signal there fast enough. You're not gonna be able to defend yourself. So from here to here, from here to here, this is, I just gotta check the time. From here to here, you're in your flinch block. Call it a flinch block, because when you flinch, you'll naturally go into the right spot, and with some training, you can even use Learn how to use it to defeat most takedowns. You're going to defeat the jiu-jitsu black belt or even brown belt in jiu-jitsu or even purple belt probably. Doubt it. High school wrestler, no. You're not going to defeat him with this. You might be able to um, do a little bit or keep him off a little bit and get some lucky strikes in, especially if it's some, a high school wrestler who hasn't wrestled in 50 years. But for the most part, if you're super serious about self-defense, Learn some groundwork. Learn how to sprawl. Learn how to defend yourself on the ground. Anyway, so we're here, right? I create this pattern interrupt. I want to interrupt your pattern. My hand goes between your fa my face and your fist. My face and your hand, your whatever. So I'm here from this position. 
I'm going to extend the front hand. And when I extend the front hand, I do that by turning the shoulder. I'm going to turn around my spine, create max, maximum power, pushing power to get them off of me. And I'm going to come here and then the right hand is going to follow it. So this one's going to create some distance. It's kind of like the jab, right? In boxing, I turn my jab over. It's a jab and then bam, come through with that right hand crossing punch called a cross punch because it goes across your bunch, your body. They're both jabs really. They're both straight punches, straight punch, straight punch. But I'm not going to risk my knuckles. Um, it's not even about risking the knuckles. It's also that this is very strong and this is very strong. Open hands are actually stronger than fists. Open fingers will break. <laughs> One, by itself, it's going to break. If you put them together, they're extremely flexible. So they're strength in numbers, right? So you're here, palm strike, palm strike. And that's how you're going to start. One, two, one, two. And the key is, like everything else, keep it really tight in front of your body. If you're doing this, or if, it, and a lot of people do this just because they've never done it before, which is why you have to practice. They start. And I saw a, another great video I saw this week by um, Tim Larkin. Tim Larkin, violence. Sometimes violence is the answer. Oh no, when violence is the answer is his book. One of the best books I've ever read about practical self-defense. I think this guy is the pioneer one of the pioneers, one of the leading guys in realistic self-defense. You've, you've got, if you, if you don't follow his channel, you need to follow it because he does breakdowns like videos. This is where all this stuff comes from. He's like, we, this is what we thought happened. We thought this happened in a bar fight with, you know, 20, 30 years ago, but there are cameras everywhere now. Now we know exactly what happened. That's why this doesn't work. That's why Wing Chun is not the answer to the Western boxer, right? Uh, no offense, Master Wong and all those other guys that do the clickbaity stuff. And there's, martial arts is not self-defense. Self-defense is self-defense, martial arts is martial arts. There are crossovers, technique sharing, and you, uh, you can be a great martial artist and also a great self-defense instructor, but you have to understand the principles of self-defense, not just the techniques. And that's where someone like Tim Larkin comes in. So Tim Larkin, the title of his video was, um, Never Slap a Killer. <laughs> Never Slap a Killer, and, and, and these are tragic videos. I see these all the time mostly through Tim Larkin's stuff years ago. And then I hadn't seen him in a while. He's popped back up again. He must be doing better uh, SEO on his titling or something. I don't know. I quit following him for a while because I got so busy. But he would show these breakdowns where the guy's got a gun, stupid road rage, over a parking spot or something. One guy tries to pump up his chest, comes up. The other guy's willing to kill. He doesn't know that. He thinks he's just going to punch him. He goes for the punch of the other guy, bam, bam, bam. And that's it. One guy goes to jail forever, or maybe not. Maybe he has good defense and, you know, can prove or whatever. But life ruined, life gone. Two families. I mean, it's how, how silly. But the point was, <laughs> the point of that video, my point is, go, don't go around uh, trying to fight people all the time. You never know who's carrying a gun, right? Or a knife or what their experience is. And the highest form of self-defense is don't be there. But two is don't never slap a killer is that, you know, if you're going to go into a self-defense situation, don't go half-hearted. Yes, don't learn, don't go, uh, don't, don't be non-committal. Don't play around with self-defense. When you go, you go 100% and it's immediate direct explosive. As hard as you can, as fast as you can, direct line as much as you can. So, and that's why I like this. So I'm in, in this flinch block, once you get the flinch block, palm strike, turn for the palm strike, pushing off of the floor. You can't see my feet. But I'm on the balls of my feet, driving my whole body, my significant weight, into his face for self-defense. One, two, and then you're going to bring through. There's a lot of ways to do elbows. You can bring them up. You can bring them down over the top. You can bring it to the side. You can bring them up at the angle. They're all elbow strikes. Some people, that's even an elbow strike, although I wouldn't do it. That one hurts. So straight in, that could be an elbow strike, I guess. But think of touching your thumb to your chest and using not your arm, your arm's not swinging around, it's your whole body turning, pushing off the floor and bringing that through. And I always like to add a knee strike. And this kind of knee strike is the one that comes up and swings in and you drive your whole body weight 
into that floating rib, that last rib, which is gonna detach, go through the lungs. They're coughing up blood for self-defense. They can't run and catch you. From here, one, two, three, four. Now, you're gonna do that particular situation or that particular thing in the fight? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It depends on the principles. What are your targets? Face, yes. Now you can practice and go slow, super slow at first. Crawl, walk, run, crawl, walk, run. This is crawl. Make sure that when this goes out, this stays in guarding your head, right? And that stays guarding your head. And that comes back guarding your head. What you will do, what most people do, is they'll do this, they'll do this, they'll do that, or they'll do some version of that. Learn how to turn and always fight from behind your guard and then start to throw that knee. The hands are here, I'm grabbing him, pulling down as I pull my knee up for maximum power. Because again, you never slap a killer. You're not going for, you're not, going, you're not doing a half-hearted attack. It's all in. But if you realize that you have to defend yourself, you have no other choice, you can't play around. Then here's where the coupaton comes in. Good thing I'm wearing shorts today with a pocket. You can hold it like this. You're going to hold it like this. And again, this is, this is where I think there's another video. I see Mike, hard to hurt Mike. He's breaking coconuts with these things or trying to or something. And the problem with all of those, and I'm not criticizing angry Mike. I was just kidding. I'd wink at you, but I don't, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Um, you're not going to watch this anyway. But I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying. We can make anything look anything that we want until... I don't know, and I don't know. You could be right, I could be wrong. I could be right, you could be right in another way. I don't know, but what I'm saying is that uh, I have used it for some, some things, I've never struck anybody with it, but just this experience in the, in the gym, which, you know, it's not hitting me back, it's not a hard head, it's not a moving target, so I don't know, right? But here's how I want you to practice it, just in case, just in case. You have this in your hand because you had your keys with you, you lost your cane or you didn't have your cane, you go do that palm strike first and then the second one is gonna be just a hammer. Bam! And not, not a swinging arm hand, because when your arm comes this way, just like with the collie sticks and the nunchucks or anything else, and they instinctively just block that arm, you've lost it. This one comes from here, almost like you're, you know, I, I, don't, I never threw a ball like that. We always threw it this way, right? And it's this, bam, straight in, that hatchet, right? Boom. And so you're going to bring this in, and you've got this in it, and that's coming, and it's a slight turn, and it's going right here. Or here, or here, or here, or here, into the chest. So from here, palm, strike, then drive the elbow, grab, drive the knee. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time, crawl, walk run, start getting faster, and then, and then all in, one, two, three, four, drive another elbow, drive a couple of knees, take them to the ground, whatever. But if you wanted to have an idea, you've been asking me, can you use the coupaton? How would you use the coupaton? They're usually a few bucks, right? Um, but like Sensei Amit said, if you don't train, if you don't know how to do anything with an open hand, you're not gonna be able to defend yourself with a weapon in your hand anyway. Not with this weapon, maybe the, maybe this one. But if you're learning how to use this one, why wouldn't you learn how to be able to keep fighting if you lost it or it fell out of your hand or whatever? All right, so final one with the band. Oh, cool. Yeah, it, it, uh, excellent point. It is a force multiplier. I'm moving the camera again, hold on. Keeps getting taller and lower. There we go. I'm going down. All right, so it goes around the chest again. This is the final one I want you to try. And like I said, this is for, I'm gonna bring it up again, sorry. I hate, I don't, I don't like to apologize unless it's something important either, so I just broke my own rule. From here, see how it's on my forehead? You don't have to stick it on your forehead, but it's gonna be that high. And I'm showing you from the side because I want you to push forward and away from you and not down. You'll want to do this at first. See how that wraps down your back? That's how you know it doesn't work. From here, 
straight out. One, two, three. And again, I don't know why I'm counting because I'm gonna go for 30 seconds. And I just, as soon as you're out, you're back. And your goal is just put a lot of stress, tension on those upper arms in the back. And that's gonna really start to fire those muscles back there. The, uh, what are they called? Triceps, those triceps, triceps extension. And then when you have to get the hands up in the uh, flinch block so that you can palm strike, and you can elbow, you can drive the knee, and hammer fist. A lot of that's coming out of there. You're gonna get a lot of strength. I call these just standing push-ups with that band. If you want to see the, the price of any of those things or how to get those, they're in the links below. The first link is the Oak Fighting King, King Masters King. The rest are listed, I guess. All right, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in just a little bit. We'll be right back.